All right. I think that dinner was exactly five minutes long. Possibly. <coughs> Excuse me. Possibly six minutes long. But I made it. It's the important thing. I'm not that late. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Saturday evening. I'm your host, Cage Tiger. And this is my stream where I play Final Fantasy VI for all eternity. I had to just rush a really quick dinner because I underestimated how long it would take to cook. And it was only just finished at, uh, at 7 o'clock, so then I had to like hurry up and serve it and eat it very, very quickly. How are you guys doing? Uh, a lot of people were gone at, at TwitchCon and various other places uh, last week. I hope you guys had a good time. I hope you had a very relaxing and and friendly experience. But uh, now we're back, and now we're going to play some games. A lot of people back this week. Sean Bouchard started streaming again, play-by-play, uh, -play on Thursdays now and told his absolutely amazing, truly madly Viking story, which I was super looking forward to, uh, because the, uh, I, that's like the only romance novel I've read, so he and I have that in common, I guess. I don't know if he's ever actually read it. I, based on his story, it sounded like he had just sort of, like, been made aware of it, but it wasn't clear if he'd actually read, um... If he'd actually read the, the romance novel. I have read that romance novel, and holy crap, is that a weird romance novel. Um, yeah, Jet Lag, it's, it's, in, um, it's in the play-by-play -play VODs. It's the final question of the night um, for this past Thursday. So if you just go to, uh, to the, the If and Death channel and, and look for his, uh, his most recent stream and then just go all the way to the end. It's kind of a long story, so make sure you back it up like a little, a little ways before it ends. But it was super cute. Maybe I'll tell, uh, maybe I'll tell my truly madly Viking story in the break. Uh, although mine's not nearly as interesting as Sean's, unfortunately. It's kind of ironic because uh, Sean's story is about how, like, he and a bunch of other people were tricked into thinking they would get like academic reward for reading Truly Madly Viking, and I got an academic reward for reading Truly Madly Viking, because I, I did it for a, a, uh, for a class for extra credit. Uh, it's, is she, it's not a Randy she-whale. So, the plot is, as I remember it, is that there's a Viking who gets thrown through time by an orca whale, I think to, like, find his destiny or some shit like that. Um, and then he meets a psychologist single mother of twins, and they bang a lot. That's basically the plot of the book. He also meets another time-traveling Viking, uh, who came there from the past while he's, while he's around in the future, um, because that other Viking is a character from another one in this series of novels about time-traveling Vikings. This isn't just an isolated romance novel. This is, there are like a dozen of these. <laughs> Truly Madly Viking happened to be the one I picked, but uh, I know there's one called The Very Virile Viking as well. So, anyway. Uh, let's talk about Final Fantasy VI. What happened last week? Um, we got some characters back. We got um, Steve, who was super easy to get back. And we sort of got Realm, we found her, um, but then we had to leave her in a bed unconscious because she, like, she was attacked by a behemoth monster thing that we fought off. Um, and then we went and got Mog back, so we have, our, we have our Mog returned to us, and then we went and got a Yeti for some reason. So uh, that's a thing that happened. We have a we have a yeti in our party now. He is a f his uh, his actual name is uh, Umaro, uh, but we named him Tomorrow. So you know, 
I might try. <laughs> he's waiting. He's currently waiting in the airship. Um, so I may go and uh, and try him out. I'm actually going to go back to his cavern first, I think, because there were some treasures there that I wanted to get. Um, no, we didn't use jerky to uh, to catch uh, to catch the yeti. We we got a an esper. We took it like an esper crystal thing, the uh, whatever they're called. I keep wanting to say materia. It's not materia. It does start with an magicite. That's thank you. Um, so we yeah, there was he had a magicite and we took the magicite and he got angry and he fought us and then Mog was like, "Yo, dog, you owe me a favor. Join our party." And Numara was like, "All right." So yeah, there we go. So let's <laughs> let's let's go and and try him out and see see how this goes. Um, all right, let me switch over. There we go, and start up the game. As usual, no spoilers unless I'm allow I'm about to miss something super important that I can't come back for, in which case say important in chat. But other than that. Don't tell me anything. I'm having a good time trying to figure out what the heck is going on all on my own. Um, Alright. So, let's see. <laughs> yes, we caught the Yeti with violence. That is how that happened, in fact. Uh, Alright, this looks like most recent. try going... Oh, did I put my... We also got the super important relic. Um... Moogle charm. Which stops random encounters from happening. So, uh... Yes! We got Tritog! Yeah, we fought... Oh, yeah, so for those of you who weren't here last week, we also fought the, uh, the Phoenix Duck. Uh, and we got the Phoenix Duck. We fought him, and he was like, "Whoa! Thank you for freeing me. Thank you for freeing me from that icy prison." And I was like, "That wasn't what I was trying to do, but okay." And then he joined us, so you know that's awesome. So even though Celeste is my healer, and I am loath, oh, we also fought another dragon. We fought um, the ice dragon, but it was not nearly as hard as the cave dragon was. Yeah, you know, the Phoenix Duck, the, the thing that, like, was in the very, very beginning of the game when, like, Terra um, was being mind-controlled and those guys in the mech pants, like, brought her out here and she was reacting to, like, this crystallized bird thing in a, in a giant ice shard or whatever it was, um, and they reacted and so, and, like, she was able to break out of mind control or something like that. That thing. We finally fought that thing. And we have it now. Now it's ours. Oh yes, we did get Mogs. We also got Mogs Last Dance. Uh, for those of you who are curious, we are now a dance dance commander um, because we got we got Snowman Jazz. So we have all the Moogle dances now. Yeah, Buckster McGee did a good job being the, uh, the temporary Steph. Worked out quite well. All right, let's see. Let's see what this Yeti can do. If I can find the Yeti. Is the Yeti gonna be down in the edge? Oh, there's the Yeti. Hey, Yeti. Tomorrow. Let's see. Let's see what these folks can do. <coughs> this may be a little bit dangerous without a healer, but I'll try it out. We'll see what happens. Jazz doesn't actually sound like a dance, though, is the thing. It's, it's like, because it's snowman. It's like, 
It's a type. It sounds like it should be a type of music. Oh, he's got no skills. Can I equip him? No. I can give him relics. I'm not going to yet. I wonder if he just acts randomly. Anyway, I'm going to unequip the Mog Bracelet so that we... Um, okay, there we go. Um, so we see what this is like. I'm going to save here. Now that we have Mog back, we can do the uh, Moogle-based drinking game. So if you have a drink with you tonight, drink every time Mog stumbles when trying to dance. Well, now that you mention it, Jetlag, like, we probably did perform in my, like, middle school jazz dance class something more or less like snowman jazz for like our winter dance recital. I think what we actually did was Santa Baby, but you know, close enough. Of course, we may also run into the problem that we may never get to the Yeti because everyone else will level up too fast. Oh, we missed it. We missed fighting uh, Tonberries in Tomorrow's Cave, huh? Well, we're going back to Tomorrow's Cave, so that could still happen. the new blitz what recovers party at own expense Ooh, that's a uh... hmm so that'll be s a x d s a x d right left I don't like the at his expense part because I need Sabin to, to stay around Like, uh, seems like the Yeti is maybe auto-controlled, like the Yeti just does whatever it wants to do, which makes sense for that Yeti. That Yeti was kind of, like, ornery. Baronado does sound pretty cool, we'll see. I don't, uh, I don't like self-sacrifice moves in general. I'm, I rarely use those in any game. Because, like, if it ends up knocking out uh, Sabin, then, uh, like, you know, I still have to spend however much time reviving Sabin, so it's still problematic. <laughs> also read Bernado as Bernando and thought of, like, a suave Spanish bear. We can call Sabin that. That can be his nickname, Fernando. <laughs> Fernando, the suave Spanish karate bear. That's his 
his middle name. I don't know what his last, what is their last name? It's him and Egger. Do, do we know what like their royal family name is? Uh. I pretty much just pick these dances at random. I'm, I can't, like, short of, you know, having, fighting an elemental enemy and knowing, like, what element is strong against them, I can't really tell much difference between the different dances. Except that Love Sonata seems to have, like, a higher chance of doing healing attacks. But, or, I guess attack is the wrong word, but healing moves. Um, but short of that, I, yeah, I kind of just, like, pick whatever sounds interesting at that moment. for you and me and Liberty Bernando. It's an ABBA song. Am, am, I, am I incorrect there? I feel like I've heard that. Unless it's the, There's also... So there's an ABBA song and a Lady Gaga song that are each... Um, Saben Bernando de, de Figaro. Yes, there you go. Um, there is a Lady Gaga song and an ABBA song that are each, like, uh, the name of a Spanish man. And I don't remember which is which. For, okay, Fernando is ABBA. What's the, what's the Lady Gaga one, then? Alejandro is the Lady Gaga one. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> I knew you guys would have my back on this one. Fernando, Alejandro, you know, they're... <laughs> you can see how I got confused, right? There are mentions of Alejandro, Fernando, and Roberto in the Lady Gaga song. Well, yeah, so there you go. All these, all these song dudes are just hanging out together, just chilling. I'd make a cool little like mini web series or something. It's like people who are mentioned in songs, just like hanging out. Um, like Jolene and uh, I don't know. Jesse and his girl. I just say I'm fine. Are you guys talking about Ghost Rider? The uh, like. The, the 90s PBS show, or am I thinking, uh, is this something else? You know what TV show I thought of the other, the other day that I hadn't thought of in years? The Mystery Files of Shelby Woo, which I believe is an old Nickelodeon show. Did anyone else ever watch that? I remember very little, except it was about an Asian girl and her friends and they solved mysteries. And they were like, pretty tech savvy for what I assume was like the early to mid 90s. Um, Alex Mack was a good show, too. Oh, man. She was like a secret experiment and she could turn into a liquid. <laughs> that was like, it was just about her powers and she was running from government agents. Okay, I got that one. Oh, a lot 
lot of old Nickelodeon shows that I used to watch. The, uh, it was Are You Afraid of the Dark, too, which was like a good, like, Twilight Zone for kids kind of thing. Probably de imp them. Do, does Are You Afraid of the Dark hold up? Oh, I'm I'm actually happy to hear that. <laughs> because uh I was I was thinking that like looking back it'd probably just be totally cheesy and dumb. Um Yeah, I remember our, some episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark freaking me out as a kid. Um, not all of them. Some of them were scarier than others, but... So I think this is the final area. Maybe not? Whoa. Right. Forgot about that. Yeah, I love that Keenan from All That is now on SNL. Yeah, all that was like SNL Junior. It was just like little kids variety show. It was super cute. I used to love um, Lori Beth Denberg on that show. She did a segment called Vital Information that always cracked me up the hell up. where there was like this l shape-shifting lizard that um crap no this isn't the way I wanted to go damn it I'm gonna have to go back in um there was like a shape-shifting lizard that was like pretending to be someone's pet iguana and then when she like wasn't paying attention it like took over her life and pretended to be her and in the end, it, like, turned her into a lizard and, like, dropped her in the well and, like, took her place. And I remember being just freaked the hell out. I don't remember Roundhouse. Hmm. I didn't know that one. As far as... I, I didn't watch a whole lot of variety show. Probably all that was the only one I did watch. No, that's not true. I watched the the Amanda show because Amanda Bynes had a like variety sh sketch show as well. The episode with the mirrors was that the one where like there were all those shadow people who lived in the mirrors, and then it ended with like the main characters getting stuck in the shadow dimension or whatever. I remember being freaked the fuck out by a lot of these episodes. Now that you guys are talking about it. It was one about, like, magicians, where one guy was like, there was a kid who was like a magician's apprentice, and, I don't know, the magician died in the end, but, like, the kid was able to, like, rise up and, and take on the mantle or something. <laughs> oh, old Nickelodeon shows. less with us, so we're gonna have to make it. Was, was it sugar that they were throwing on the fire? They used to throw something on the fire to make it spark and like go foom and it was like always cool and mysterious. 
I don't, I don't know that they ever said what it was, but it could easily have been sugar. Yeah, interesting mechanic having a having a character that's like not really under your control. Um, but I don't think worth it. I'm probably gonna switch out to my to my healer when we get back. First, let's see if I can find that like one chest that I was missing from that cave without accidentally falling down again. Dairy Creamer is very dangerous to throw on a fire. Don't throw that on a fire. That's that can like burn down the forest you're in. If you guys saw the episode of um, Mythbusters where they made uh, they actually they started making by making a sawdust cannon and then they replaced the sawdust with a dairy cream with dairy creamer to um, to try and make a better version. Uh, if you've seen that episode, you know that Dairy Creamer is very, very flammable. <laughs> Especially when you, like, aerate it, as you would if you were, like, throwing a handful onto a fire. time. We can do this. Now, now, Jason. The Boy Scouts can't help that they're part of a corrupt, short-sighted organization. They're just trying to learn camping skills. Punch to the face! Seems like Mog just got some Esper stuff. Do you need a new Esper Mog? No, this one's here to give you more MP, right? This one has magic power up and some stuff that you don't know, so we'll switch to straight. Oh, Rick and Morty. Uh, I... So, my husband really likes Rick and Morty, and some of my friends really like Rick and Morty, and I just can't get into Rick and Morty. Like, I get... I guess I get what people see in it. Um, but I just find... I just find Rick just so off-putting that I find the show uncomfortable to watch. And I'm not, like, I'm not a fan of that kind of art style, personally. So, like, that bothers me a little bit, too. But. but if you like Rick and Morty, more power to you. The comedy I've been watching lately uh, is Brooklyn Nine-Nine, which the new season just started, so I'm super happy. We like finally got around to uh, to watching the end of the previous season, and we were like, uh, "Hey, there we go!" Um, no, <laughs> come on! After all that effort, oh, good. These are the pugs. Puck. This is probably gonna go very poorly. Hey guys, so these monsters are a staple of the Final Fantasy series, uh, known in this game as Pugs, but in later games as Tonberries. 
um, you will notice that they're getting slightly closer and closer. If they get to me, I will die. That's not universally true in all the games, but generally they have attacks that are just so powerful that they instantly kill you. The only thing is that they get, it takes them a little while to get there. So you kind of have to kill them quickly. Yeah, they carry little lanterns and they have little knives. And uh, they can hurt you roll bad with those knives. Some games they have um, powers that hurt you based on like how many steps you've taken in the game. In some games they have powers that hurt you based on how many enemies you've killed over the course of the game. And in some games they just have insanely powerful attacks that just do a lot of damage to you. Oh, we got one of them. Get two of them. Come on, guys, you can do this. Hey. Suplex and Yeti Punch for the win! <laughs> this one we can jam out to because we deserve, a, we deserve a little celebration for defeating the Pugs. This one, there's a hole in the floor right here. Yeah. Oh, I probably should have uh, should have healed everybody up. Basically, everyone knows healing magic by now, so... The Yeti didn't take a lot of damage in that. Remarkably. already. Maybe, maybe the only one left was a box of pugs. Maybe I just came back for a box of pugs. <laughs> Damn it. But whatever, you guys got to see some pugs, so you know. Um, of the Tonbury hunt in Final Fantasy 13 because I freaking love the intro for the Tonbury hunt in Final Fantasy 13. It was the best. Right, and I assume that entrance was the right-hand door, which 
means that we have then taken all of the doors. So yeah, the only box that I didn't have had monsters in it. <laughs> well, that's what I get for retracing my steps. <laughs> no, that was if I to if I talked about it, it would have been a while back, not um, not within the past couple weeks. Uh, so. Final Fantasy XIII has a mechanic whereby um, you go on these hunts. They're basically like um, like optional boss fight things where you know it's it puts a marker on your map and says like there's a super strong monster here, go and fight it and kill it, and then you get a reward for you know completing X number of hunts or whatever. There was something similar in Final Fantasy XII. Um, this one's a little bit different, but not like substantially. But the cool thing is, every time you um, you meet one of these monsters, they're usually introduced by just a you know like a, a, a brief, cute cinematic. Um, so there was one monster that I saw on the hunt list that was really sort of interesting looking. It was like vaguely humanoidish, but it had like these sort of blue skin and it had these hunched shoulders and these long like giant tentacle fingers that were like purple and stripy and it looked like really sort of gross and creepy and cool um and uh so i you know i went off to to fight this monster thinking like okay this looks this looks you know like tough and, and kind of creepy but i bet i can i bet i can handle this um, so you go to the fight, and the monster shows up, and it, it shows up by, like, coming out of the ground, like, you see, like, these little, like, tendrils start to come up out of the ground, and then it, like, bursts out of the ground with, a, you know, in its full, like, blah, monstery glory, and, um, you're get you know, everybody gears up to fight it, and then right before it would normally go into, like, the playable mode, uh, instead... A, from the, like, the back, a Tonbury jumps down and kills the monster in one hit, and then turns around and looks at you, and, like, comes face to face with you, like, with its little lantern and knife, and then the battle starts. And it's like, oh, shit! <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Jason. But, yeah, that was, uh... That was an incredibly creepy moment because, like, the thing was, you know, the fights had been, the, the hunts had been getting harder and harder. So it was already, like, a little intimidating, like, ooh, this looks like a pretty scary monster. And then you have <laughs> the Tonbury coming down, and it's like, well, now you fight the thing that just one-shotted the target that you were supposed to be fighting. Really, really well done. Really great moment in that game. I'm gonna put the Moogle Charm back on for now. Because um, I don't feel like fighting a bunch of little weaklings on the way through town. Uh, and then we're gonna heal everybody up, switch party members, and we'll be good to go. Is the Yeti an imp? The Yeti is an imp. I wonder if I just. If I switch party members, I wonder if the Yeti stays an imp. You probably wouldn't see that on the on the over map, I would guess. It'd be hilarious if it was though. I I'm almost sure by the way, Steph, that I have told that story on this stream before, like a while back. So if it sounds familiar, it might be because you heard me tell it already. Oh no, that's right, we have a full heal point at the bottom of town, so I'll just use that. Yeah, Moogle Charm, super useful, A+. Thank you guys for reminding me to get it. And by reminding me, I mean telling me, because I didn't know. <laughs> and there's no, like, there's no direct, like, indication of, like, just go to the place where you were talking to this character and click on this random spot on the wall. Like, it's super unclear why you would ever, ever do that. 
Um, so it's sort of one of those things that you kind of need to be told is there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. I told this story back when I started playing weeks and weeks and weeks ago. This is week 16, I think, by the way, of me playing this game. Which marks, what, three months? <laughs> I have been playing this game a long time. Get on the thing. There we go. No, Buckster. I'm gonna go this entire game and never buy sprint shoes. <laughs> at this point, it's a. At this point, it's a matter of principle. Four months. Oh yeah, sixteen. Yeah, four months. Four months, guys. That's crazy. Aw. She has so much to live for, you guys. Good. You can you can be our Well no. I was gonna say you could be our party mascot, but you can't be our party mascot because Mock is our party mascot. By which I mean the character who we're gonna walk around as. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure Maru is Mog's mascot. Okay, so we have a Yeti. Um, it's not quite break time yet, so... What do I want to do next? We have to go... Uh, we still have to find Locke. We still have to... Realm is still, like, recovering. So we have to get her back at some point. We still have to find Strago. Is somewhere in the world. Terra is not joining us for now. I'm guessing she'll, like I said, I think she'll join us when we get um, Locke back. I should try doing something during the week. What was it? Oh, well. If that's important, I'll remember it. Does it... I mean, maybe I'm... If you tried typing Final Fantasy 6 instead of FF6, or like FF with the numerals instead of the number, or like different combinations, would that make a difference? I actually don't know much about the Twitch TV app, so... See, the thieves have all left town. Well, that's good. So we got bigger back. Coliseum stuff. Um, we found Locke's lady friend is still in a coma, I believe. We've been here before. Hmm. Wait, Geek and Sundry has a baby now? Yeah, I've, I've never used Twitch's, like, um, tools for finding people in any way. I always, like, I have a few streams that I know that I want to see, and I go directly to them, and I never, you know, I never really browse anything, so... So I am not very familiar with their search tools. Aw, Steph has a loaf cat. Their loaf cat is normal. I wish I had a cat. I miss cats. Mm. 
just gonna go to some towns and see if like anything looks like a place I haven't been or a place where there's something to do. Here's an Ikea. Given that Shadow is presumably one of the characters on this list, if all of those spaces are filled in, then uh, we're only missing one character. And I'm not even sure if all those spaces are filled in, so... Interesting. That's, int that's good to know. There was also a forest where they said there was supposed to be like a dragon thing, but the enemies there were way too strong for us, so we left. Twitch, apparently. <laughs> no. How do you guys usually use Twitch? Like, do do you normally just go to shows that you know that like you know someone's streaming, so you just go to that you know to that person's stream, to that person's channel, or do you do stuff like um? you know, like, browse for particular game titles and just see, oh, is anybody playing this game that I like? Or, or do you, like, go to their, like, currently being viewed stuff? Or, yay, I'm on TV! <laughs> Marsha's got me up on the TV. Yeah, okay, so everybody else is kind of on, on my wavelength here, where it's like, no, I pretty much just, just watch the streams of people that, you know, I'm following. I mean, I assume they have those tools there so, you know, people use them, but... Right, that's Kefka's tower, maybe? Maybe? Save. But, maybe I'll go, um... I thought Kepka's tower was on the other continent, though. So, maybe this is something else. It's bad. There was that rock, there was also that rock that appeared in the ocean that, like, hadn't. It only appears once in a blue moon or whatever. But, we weren't able to do anything there last time. What's this? It's like... Four trees. Can't land here though. If 
I've been to this spot? Remember. Man, I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. That's okay, let me struggle. The stoma? Yeah. The cyan's house. Oh, do I still have the Moogle charm on? I should take the Moogle charm off. Yeah. Just so I get my, uh, gotta get my grinding in. <laughs> Don't drink the water, for sure. Those beds, these beds. Cyan. Cyan. Are you Mo? You are Mo. Okay, so these are the three stooges, apparently. <laughs> I don't. No. No, you leave him alone. <laughs> We're going into <laughs> Cyan's subconscious. To have a fight there, you guys! And of course, that switches us to Sabin, because who else would it be? Uh, yes! Oh, so just Sabin! You guys! He's dreaming about Sabin! Um, so, uh, a save. And, uh,. Maybe that's break time? I know I started a little late. But uh, let's call this break time. And we'll come back. Let me switch back here. We'll come back after the break. And we'll find out what the hell is going on here. I'm going to have a little bit more dinner. Uh, uh, eat some pasta salad since I had to like wolf, uh, <laughs> wolf mine down beforehand. Um... But yeah, okay. This is apparently a thing that's happening. See you guys in a few minutes.